Hello everyone. So now we're going to discuss about potassium. Uh, potassium is another type 2 uh, micronutrient and it is required for growth in children. Uh, again, it is helpful in uh, so many enzymatic reactions. You will see from our tutorial actually. Very important for muscle strength. You know, if you're tired, if you if you feel that your muscles are paining, aching, fatigue, uh, most likely it is a potassium deficiency. Potassium, you require a lot in your diet, actually, you know, and uh, we always think of banana as the good source of potassium, but it's not actually, you know, you most of your potassium, you get it from green leafy vegetables. So it's important to have your green leafy vegetables. You can also get it from your sprouts, you know. Another reason to have good amount of potassium is to to you know uh, to kind of I would say stabilize your blood pressure. So it would keep your blood pressure lower if you have food which is high in potassium. So let's watch this tutorial and learn about potassium and what are the sources and uh, how much do we need for, uh, age wise. So enjoy. Thank you. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on the importance of potassium. In this tutorial, we will learn about health benefits of potassium, causes of its deficiency, recommended daily intake of potassium, food sources. Potassium is an essential type 2 nutrient. It is required for normal functioning of cells. It is also one of the important electrolytes. Potassium's main role is to maintain the normal levels of fluid inside the cell, while sodium maintains the fluid level outside the cells. Potassium regulates heartbeat and supports normal blood pressure. It ensures proper functioning of muscles and nerves. It contributes towards protein synthesis and carbohydrate metabolism. We will now see the effects of sugar and sodium on blood pressure. On eating food high in sugar and salt, our sodium level increases. Sugar enhances sodium absorption in the body by the kidney. As a result, sodium gets retained in the body. This causes an increase in blood pressure and water retention in the body. As a result, puffiness in hands and feet can be seen. It is recommended to avoid sugar intake and increase potassium intake. Potassium relaxes the blood vessels and removes excess sodium. Thereby, the blood pressure reduces. Remember that each day our body requires more potassium than sodium. I will discuss the recommended dietary allowance later in this tutorial. There are various factors that cause increased deficiency of potassium. A diet which is low in potassium is one of them. Some medicines can cause removal of a lot of potassium from the body. This factor also causes deficiency of potassium. Frequent vomiting and diarrhea can also lead to deficiency. In such cases, along with potassium, the body also loses chloride and sodium. Deficiency of magnesium also causes potassium deficiency. Kidneys need magnesium to reabsorb potassium. This helps in maintaining normal levels of potassium in cells. People with pica are also at the risk of potassium deficiency. Pica is an intake of inedible substances like clay or soil. Clay binds with potassium and increases 
potassium excretion from the body. This can lead to the deficiency of the mineral in the body. Inflammation in the intestine can decrease the absorption of potassium. This factor also causes deficiency of potassium. Low potassium intake impairs calcium reabsorption in the kidney. This leads to increased calcium excretion in the urine and causes kidney stones. Early symptoms of deficiency include fatigue, muscle weakness and cramps. Irregular heartbeat is another example. Loss of potassium happens due to impaired glucose metabolism. Sudden loss of potassium can increase blood sugar level. The deficiency causes growth retardation and decreased levels of growth hormone. Growth hormone helps in the formation of new cells and stimulates growth. Severe deficiency can cause high blood pressure and mental confusion. High blood pressure is one of the major causes for heart diseases and stroke. Like deficiency, increase in the level of potassium also causes health issues. Increase in the level of potassium in the blood can be fatal. There are various factors that cause Increased levels of potassium in blood. Certain medication for kidney ailments is one of the reasons. Using potassium-based salt substitutes also increases potassium in blood. Eating a high potassium diet with existing kidney issues is another risk factor. I will discuss the food sources of potassium in the later part of this Tutorial. The symptoms of increased potassium in the body are weakness and fatigue, nausea, vomiting, difficulty in breathing and chest pain are other symptoms. Recommended intake of potassium differs for different age groups. 1 to 3 year old requires around 1100 mg per day. 4 to 6 year old require about 1550 mg per day. For men, it is 3750 mg per day. For women, it is around 3225 mg per day. I will now tell you about the vast food sources of potassium. It is naturally present in all plant-based foods. Pulses, legumes, nuts, seeds and spices are the richest sources. Vegetables, fruits, grains and milk also have potassium. 30 grams of Raw green gram has approximately 353 milligrams of potassium. 30 grams of raw soya bean has around 490 milligrams. 30 grams of raw split red gram has approximately 419 milligrams. 30 grams split black gram has around 347 milligrams. 20 grams of almonds have approximately 140 milligrams. 20 grams of cashew nuts have approximately 127 milligrams. 10 grams of sesame seeds have around 46 milligrams. 10 grams of sunflower seeds have approximately 56 milligrams of potassium. 100 grams of spinach has around 625 milligrams of potassium. 100 grams of amaranth leaves have approximately 572 milligrams. 100 grams of orange has nearly 164 milligrams. 
hundred grams of guava has around two eighty three milligrams of potassium. Two fifty milliliters of milk has approximately two sixty milligrams of potassium. Likewise, some spices and condiments have high amounts of potassium. Five grams of turmeric powder has around one eighteen milligrams. Five grams of fenugreek seeds have around forty six milligrams. Five grams of red chili powder has around one twelve milligrams. Five grams of black pepper seeds have approximately seventy four milligrams. Five grams of coriander seeds has around seventy four milligrams. Include these potassium rich food. regularly for good health and well-being this brings us to the end of this tutorial welcome to the spoken tutorial on potassium rich vegetarian recipes in this tutorial we will learn about benefits of potassium some vegetarian recipes rich in potassium Potassium is an essential mineral. It is required for normal functioning of cells. It regulates heartbeat and maintains normal blood pressure. Potassium ensures proper functioning of muscles and nerves. The importance of potassium has been explained in an another tutorial. Please visit our website for this tutorial. Let us now see the preparation of the recipes. The first is raw banana pepper fry. To prepare this you will need 100 g raw banana, half medium chopped tomato, half medium chopped onion, 1 tsp garlic paste, 1 whole red chili. handful of washed coriander leaves you will also need 1 tsp mustard seeds 1 tsp coriander powder 1 tsp pepper powder 1/2 tsp turmeric powder salt to taste 1 tsp oil or ghee procedure wash and peel the raw banana and cut them into pieces Place the pieces on a plate. Add one glass water in a steamer. Place the plate in the steamer and steam for twelve to fifteen minutes. If you do not have a steamer, you can use a pressure cooker. Add one glass water in a pressure cooker. Place a small stand inside the cooker to keep a plate on it. Now. Place the raw banana pieces on the plate in the pressure cooker. Cook them for fifteen to twenty minutes without a whistle on the lid. Open the cooker and let it cool. Keep them aside for later use. Heat oil or ghee in a pan and add mustard seeds. Once the seeds crackle, add the onions and garlic paste. Sauté until the onion turns golden brown in color. Add tomato and whole red chili. Cook till the tomato turns soft. To this add all the spices and salt and sauté it for 2 minutes. Pour 3 tablespoons of water and cook for 1 minute. Add the steamed raw banana to this and stir well. Cover with a lid and cook for five minutes. Lastly, add chopped coriander leaves. Raw banana pepper fry is ready. Half bowl of raw banana pepper fry has around eight hundred forty-four milligrams of potassium. The next recipe that we will see is dried lentil dumplings curry. To prepare this, you will need. 30 grams black gram, 1 medium 
chopped tomato, 1 medium chopped onion. You will also need 1 green chilli, 4 to 5 washed curry leaves, 1 small piece of ginger, handful of washed coriander leaves. Other ingredients required are 1 teaspoon cumin seeds, half teaspoon carom seeds, half teaspoon red chilli powder, half teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 teaspoon black pepper seeds, salt to taste, 2 teaspoons oil or ghee. Procedure Wash and soak black gram overnight. Completely drain the water in the morning. Grind the black gram, pepper, carom seeds, ginger and green chilli into a paste. Do not add water while making the paste. Make sure the paste is smooth. Take out this paste in a bowl. Using a spoon or hand, mix the paste until it becomes fluffy. With clean fingers, grease a plate with some oil. Then, make small balls of the paste and place them on the plate. Sun dry them for 2 to 3 days till they become hard. Keep them covered with a cloth while sun drying. You can also air dry them inside a room if you cannot dry them in the sun. Keep turning these dumplings a couple of times daily to ensure even drying. Once the dumplings are dried, heat 1 teaspoon oil or ghee in a pan. Fry them till they turn brown. Keep them aside. We will use these later. To make the curry, heat oil in a pan. Add mustard seeds and curry leaves. Once they splutter, add onion. Saute until the onions turn light brown in color. To this add tomatoes and cook till they turn soft. Add the spices, salt and fried dumplings and mix well. To this add half cup water and close with a lid. Cook for 5 minutes or till the dumplings soften. In the end, add chopped coriander leaves. Dried lentil dumplings curry is ready. Half bowl of this curry has around 937 milligrams of potassium. The third recipe is Fenugreek Seeds Curry To make this recipe, you will need 2 tablespoons of fenugreek sprouts half cup washed and chopped spinach 2 tablespoons freshly grated coconut 1 small chopped tomato 1 small chopped onion 1 green chilli 4 to 5 cloves of garlic you will also need 1 teaspoon cumin seeds, half teaspoon mustard seeds, 1 teaspoon chilli powder, half teaspoon turmeric powder, salt to taste, 1 teaspoon oil or ghee, juice of half lemon. Before we begin, I will tell you how to make sprouts. Soak 2 tablespoon of washed fenugreek seeds overnight. Drain it in the morning and tie them in a clean muslin cloth. Leave them in a warm place to germinate for a day. Once the sprouts are ready, keep it aside for later use. Heat oil or ghee in a pan and add cumin and mustard seeds. Once they splutter, Add garlic, green chilli and onion. Saute till onion and garlic turn light brown in colour. Add tomato and cook until it turns soft. To this add fenugreek sprouts and saute for 2 to 3 minutes. Add spinach and cook until it shrinks. 
This might take 2 to 3 minutes. Next, add spices, salt and half cup of water. Mix well and cover with a lid and cook till the sprouts become soft. Lastly, add grated coconut and give it a mix. Squeeze lime juice after serving. Fenugreek seeds curry is ready. Half bowl of this curry has around 801 milligrams of potassium. The last recipe is amaranth leaves and green gram sprouts stir fry. To make this recipe, you will need 1 cup washed and chopped amaranth leaves, 3 tablespoons green gram sprouts, half medium size chopped onion, 5 cloves of garlic, 1 green chilli. You will also need 1 teaspoon red chilli powder, half teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 teaspoon cumin seeds, 1 teaspoon mustard seeds, salt to taste, 1 teaspoon oil or ghee. The procedure for sprouting is mentioned in the earlier part of this tutorial. Please follow the same method to sprout green gram. However, note that different ingredients take different time to sprout. Let us begin. Heat oil or ghee in a pan and add mustard and cumin seeds. Once this platter, add onion, green chilli and garlic. Saute them until they turn light brown in colour. To this add the chopped amaranth leaves and mix well. Cook this for 4 to 5 minutes and then add the sprouts and spices. Mix well and cover the pan with the lid and cook till the sprouts become soft. Amaranth leaves and sprouts stir fry is ready. Half bowl of this recipe contains around 973 milligrams of potassium. Include these potassium rich recipes in your diet regularly for good health. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining. Welcome to the Spoken Tutorial on Potassium Rich Non-Vegetarian Recipes. In this tutorial, we will learn about Benefits of Potassium, Preparation of Non-Vegetarian Recipes. Potassium is an essential mineral. It is required for the normal functioning of the cells. It regulates the heartbeat and maintains normal blood pressure. For the proper functioning of muscles and nerves, potassium is required. The importance of potassium has been explained in another tutorial. Please visit our website for more details. Let us now see the preparation of the recipes. The first recipe is Egg Dosa. To make this recipe, you will need 2 eggs. 2 tablespoons foxtail millet, 1 tablespoon black gram, 1 teaspoon fenugreek seeds, 2 tablespoons chopped onion, 1 tablespoon chopped tomato, 1 teaspoon black pepper powder. You will also need salt to taste, 1 teaspoon oil. Procedure Soak the foxtail millet fenugreek seeds and black gram for 8 hours. Grind everything into a smooth batter using a mixer or a stone grinder. Transfer the batter into a bowl and leave it to ferment for 6 to 8 hours in a warm place. Once the batter is fermented, add salt and mix well. Keep this aside. We will use this Later, in a bowl, crack 2 eggs. To this add salt, pepper powder, 
onion and tomato. Mix everything well. Keep this aside for later use. Heat oil in a pan and pour the dosa batter and spread it evenly. Once the dosa is partially cooked, pour the egg mixture on the dosa. Flip the dosa and cook it on the other side as well. Egg dosa is ready. Two egg dosas have approximately 751 milligrams of potassium. Our next recipe is sesame seed coated fish. I will be using rohu. You can use any other fish as per availability. For example, herring and mackerel. These fish are also rich in potassium. Let us begin with the recipe. To make this recipe, you will need 100 grams of washed and cleaned rohu, 1 tablespoon roasted gram flour, 1 tablespoon roasted sesame seeds, 1 teaspoon ginger garlic paste, 1 teaspoon cumin seeds powder, 1 teaspoon coriander powder. You will also need 1 teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 teaspoon red chilli powder, 1 teaspoon pepper powder, 1 teaspoon carom seeds, 1 handful of coriander leaves, salt to taste, 2 teaspoons of oil. Procedure Apply salt and turmeric to the washed and cleaned fish. Keep this aside for 20 minutes. Meanwhile, take gram flour in a bowl. To this add the carom seeds, salt, red chilli powder and pepper powder. Now add ginger garlic paste and cumin seeds powder. Also add coriander powder and coriander leaves. Add little water and make a paste by mixing well. Next, dip the fish in the paste and then coat it with sesame seeds. Heat oil in a pan and shallow fry the fish on both sides until cooked. Sesame seed coated fish is ready. Two small pieces of fish fry have approximately 885 milligrams of potassium. Our third recipe is chicken cutlet prepared in powder of sprouted finger millet. To make this you will need 100 grams or 4 pieces of boneless chicken, 30 grams or 2 tablespoons of finger millet powder, 2 tablespoons green peas, 2 tablespoons chopped carrot, 1 chopped green chilli. You will also need 1 teaspoon carom seeds, 1 teaspoon pepper powder, 4 to 5 chopped curry leaves, a handful of washed and chopped coriander leaves, salt to taste, 2 teaspoons oil. Procedure We will first make finger millet powder. Wash and soak finger millet overnight. Strain out excess water using a strainer. Tie it in a muslin cloth and keep it in a warm place for sprouting. It may take approximately 2-3 to three days for it to sprout. Once the finger millet sprouts, dry it in sunlight. If there isn't enough sunlight, you can even roast them on a pan without oil. Cool and grind it to make a fine powder. In a pan, add chicken, green peas and carrot. Add one glass of water and cook until chicken and vegetables are cooked. This will take approximately 10 minutes. Allow them to cool. Once cooled, grind them into a smooth paste. Transfer this into a plate. Add the rest of the ingredients to the paste and mix well. Divide this into two parts and shape them into cutlets. 
Heat oil in a pan and shallow fry the cutlets until both sides are cooked. Chicken cutlets prepared in powder of sprouted finger millet are ready. Two cutlets have around 706 mg of potassium. Our last recipe is spinach prawns curry. To make this recipe, you will need 100 grams prawns, 1 medium chopped tomato, 1 medium chopped onion, 1 cup washed spinach, 1 teaspoon coriander powder, 1 teaspoon red chili powder, 1 teaspoon turmeric powder. You will also need 1 teaspoon cumin seeds. 1 teaspoon mustard seeds, 4 to 5 curry leaves, 1 green chili, 1 teaspoon ginger garlic paste. You will also require 1 teaspoon of oil and salt to taste. Procedure to make the curry, clean and wash the prawns. Make a slit on the back side of the prawns. Pull out the black thread from it. This black thread has to be removed from the other side also, if found. Apply salt to the cleaned prawns and keep them aside for 15 to 20 minutes. Boil one glass of water in a vessel. Once the water boils, add spinach and cook for a minute. Drain the water and keep the spinach aside to cool. Once cooled, grind spinach with a green chilli into a smooth paste. We will use this paste later. Heat oil in a pan. Add mustard seeds, cumin seeds and curry leaves. Saute till the seeds crackle. To this add onion and saute till they turn light brown in colour. Add tomatoes and cook till they become soft. Add all the spices, ginger garlic paste and salt. Mix everything well. To this add the prawns and cook for 5 minutes. Add the spinach paste we made and mix again. Close with the lid and cook until the prawns are cooked. Spinach prawns curry is ready. One bowl of spinach prawns curry has around 972 mg of potassium. Remember that the measurement of one bowl is 150 milliliters. One teaspoon of nuts and seeds powder can be added to these recipes. Add it along with other spices while making the recipe. It can also be added to the chutneys for dosa. One teaspoon of nuts and seeds powder gives around 50 milligrams of potassium. The recipe for nuts and seeds powder is explained in another tutorial. Please visit our website for more details. Include these nutritious recipes in your daily diet for good health. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining.